Oh, hey, what are you doing here? What am I asking? It's a bar. I'm Fox. This is my bar. I've been teaching myself how to make cocktails through the entirety of the pandemic, and I would love to learn with you and teach you some of the stuff that I'm picking up. Uh, LCS, like, comment, and subscribe. We would love to hear from you, and if you want, feel free to send us any recommendations or suggestions you have. What drinks do you want to learn? Or if there's something that I'm not doing the right way, just let me know. I would love to learn because what I learn, we all learn. Today, I'm going to take us to a drink that is so simple and so effective that it's too good to be true. I learned it, or at least I got to better appreciate it, when I was in Brazil some time ago. I was in Sao Paulo and I was in Rio. Amazing cities. Please go visit when this pandemic is done. They're letting people in, right? Or do they have another version of the pandemic virus? Regardless, enter at your own risk, but enter this video completely fearless. Just make sure you have your ingredients. Today, we will be making... Let me do this right. A caipirinha. Oi, that's how you say hey in Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese. But today we're gonna to be talking about these ingredients. You ready? Come on down, look at this. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Simple and effective. We're gonna be using Leblon. This is what's called a cassacha. It is a Brazilian rum of sorts made from sugar cane. This brand is the 14-time San Francisco World Spirits competition winner from 2007 to 2014. And 2007 London's uh, Spirit Tasting Competition winner. Really good Kasasha. Very noticeable when you drink it. And honestly, it just works for this recipe. Now, we're going to put this to the side. Don't get too distracted. You can get any Kasasha that you want. But this is the one that was gifted to me by my buddy, Phil. He works on D. Seuss and Merrill's show. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But the point is, he's a great neighbor. If you see him around best eye, say, yo, what up, Phil? Phil's gonna be like, hey, hey, he's really cool. We're also gonna need, oh, what is this in this shot glass? Let me smell it. It's sugar, sugar. We're gonna need two teaspoons of sugar to make ourselves a caipirinha. Simple and effective drink. Lime is gonna be our next friend and the next essential tool in this triad. These three here not only make an amazing drink, they make the national drink of Brazil. This is their official drink. If you go into a Wikipedia or an encyclopedia or any pedia, it'll show you. The official drink of Brazil is the caipirinha. Is it made with this type of rum or this type of cassasha? Maybe, maybe not, but it's up to you. But I know there's a lime somewhere near you, there's some sugar somewhere near you, and a liquor store somewhere near you. Now that we got our ingredients, it's time to talk history. Who's ready? Because I am. Hey, you're back. That means you want to learn a little bit of history. Where this drink comes from? That's a good question. You're a smart person. Uh, well, during the Spanish flu, which is similar to the current pandemic that we're in, that was around 1918, there's recordings of Spanish, or better yet, patients who were suffering from the Spanish flu, who were drinking a medicinal drink that was similar to what we have here in our caipirinha. Um, this would have been in Alentejo, Portugal. They drank it, uh, something similar to what would be a hot toddy and it would have honey and lemon and garlic in it. It's probably an old wives remedy and you would drink it when, you know, whenever you're feeling down. But uh, I don't know if this was able to fight off Spanish flu, but it was a go-to that many Portuguese knew of. But we can go back even further than the Spanish flu. I can't give the exact date, but as far as the history of this cocktail goes, there was a similar cure-all that originated in Madura, Portugal. There they grew tons of sugar cane and created a beverage called the poncha. That included orange juice, lemon juice, as well as sugar 
and uh, honey and possibly garlic. Uh, this cocktail was used as another cure-all. I like, would also have had uh, Aguardente de Cana, which is an alcohol derived from the sugar cane that was grown in Madura, Portugal at the time. Now, the Portugal production eventually moves to Brazil. The weather's better and there's way more space for it. So, yeah, that poncha cocktail is another proto uh, relative of that. This guy, you're wondering why am I pointing up to him? Well, his name is Carlos Lima and he is the head of the Institute of Casacha in Brazil. So important is his drink that they have a fucking institute. Mark that down. The reason why I'm referring to him is because he is the one that's been quoted as saying that, well, after that hot toddy sort of thing they had going during the Spanish flu, Casasha in Brazil gains its existence because they sort of swap out that garlic and honey and they then put in sugar and lime. Sugar, lime. Aguardente de cana, this uh, early casasha. You put all three together and you got yourself a drink. So that's the history that we have. Who's ready to make a drink? Because I am. You gonna follow? You should. It's time to make a drink. It's time to take a peek down below. We're gonna use a mixing glass today. We're not gonna be using our shaker. This is one of those drinks that we're gonna be building up from the ground up. We're gonna have our glass here to mix. We're also gonna be using our muddler. So go into your kitchen and find something that you can mm, mm, muddle with. After that, we're gonna need our stirring spoon because obviously we gotta mix, still gotta combine our ingredients. And uh, if you're not good at measuring, let's be exact. We're gonna need a teaspoon so we can measure out our sugars. First tool we're gonna be using is our paring knife or any knife so that we can cut our lime into wedges. Do it that way. Now we have our four wedges. I'm going to go ahead and put two teaspoons of our white sugar. From there, Put that to the side. I take these wedges and I place them into our glass, our mixing glass. It's muddle time. Look at that. I love the smell of kasasha. It's so distinct. You just know this isn't something that I usually have. Pour that in there. Now, if we're gonna be stirring up such a drink, we're gonna need ice. Oh, it's gonna break. Grab your stirring spoon. Make sure you get it someplace here. And now, spin cycle. Just like that. Like your clothes are about to dry. Now, before I do that, I wanna put some particular ice inside of our glass here. I've got this really dope hexagonal glass here. Uh, it's, a glass, it's a rubber ice tray like a glove. Let's pour that bad boy out. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Take a look at that. Look at that. Give it a smell. That kasasha, oh, it just permeates the nose. It feels like trouble is brewing because it has a strength to it that is undeniable. Time to give it a taste. A kasasha is like It's like a margarita, but way more loud, way more obnoxious, way more just Johnny Cash, fuck you. You ever see that shirt? That's what this is. This is, why don't you give this a smell? Cameraman, why don't you take a, a whiff of that? Yeah, right? Something's a little different about it. It's got a little bit more edge, a little bit more 
you know, I'm from Brazil. Mm. Much better than how uh, Vin Diesel says Brazil. Oh, Brazil! In uh, Fast and the Furious. I forget which one. There's like 11 of them. But let's go over this taste. Mm. Very distinct. The tartness is what really helps cut through the strength of the kasasha. You really get that on the sides of the tongue. The colors here are clear. It almost looks like a white lady cocktail, but uh, this is definitely not that. And with the glass being the shape that it is, the ice, I mean, the ice, it just really gives this an aesthetic that I really, really take pride in if I was to serve this to someone. Obviously, you can use any ice you'd like, whatever works for you. But uh, the Caipirinha, this is a drink that, okay, you can watch a sunset to this and you can do something relaxed to this. But if you're like, hey, we're about to go out or hey, I'm in the club. Let me get a couple of these. Yeah, this gets the party rolling. And I would love this every other day of my life. I'm not going to lie. Every bar and every restaurant I went to, I said, uh, Caipirinha? And I would get it without a, without fail. I'm sure you can garnish this with the lime or maybe some other accoutrement. But what I like about it overall is it's simple and effective. I know on this web, I know on this uh, page there are going to be days where you're going to ask, or I'm going to be asking of you to grab an uh, ingredients list that is a little bit more complex. But I do take great pride in sharing with you very simple easy to do cocktails, very salt of the earth, like someone with just the bare essentials created this. This isn't, oh, do you have caviar for this? No, no, no. This is, oh, it's in the cupboard? Bring that out. And I think that across the board, you will enjoy this. I kid you not. And you'll probably get tipsy, because I'm on my way. Anyways, you're always welcome to come back to the bar, and I'm always willing to have you here. Salute. And obrigado. <laughs> oh, tasty. Hold up, they done woke me up In the kitchen with the soapy stuff 